everyone, Diane here and welcome to my studio on this wonderful sunny afternoon. Thank you for joining me for another afternoon of painting. Today I thought we would paint a poppy field in a style that you could almost call semi-abstract in as much as it is extremely loose and quite a lot of fun to do. So I've chosen three colours of paint to start with. I've got quinacridone gold, Windsor violet and olive green and I've just sprayed them to activate them and now I'm giving them a quick mix with uh, an old paintbrush just to get the paint loosened up so I've got a little puddle of each colour and then I'm going to use that puddle to charge my toothbrush with some paint and I'm going to start with the quinacridone gold which is the lightest colour so that should really go on first and I'm going to just put it on in a pretty random kind of fashion, spraying it with the toothbrush. A fairly stiff toothbrush would be best. So I'm just picking some up on the toothbrush and then I'm going to spray it. And the best way to describe this is just for you to watch. I'm going to spray it onto the paper in a fairly random way. So there's the gold going on now. And it uh, doesn't matter if we get a few blobs, that's all fine. Now I'm picking up the green and adding that. And I love the way the olive green goes with the quinacridone gold, that's lovely. And now just a few um, sprays of violet. Okay, so recently I bought myself this um, sword liner, dagger, saber, brush from Great Art and I've put the link in the information below, below the video, and it's wonderful for doing this with. So I'm just flicking, I've wetted, I've wetted the brush, and I'm just now flicking so as to give the impression of grasses, and as you flick through the, different, to the three different colors of paint, you're going to get all sorts of lovely blends of gold, violet, and green, which can give quite a, a lovely um, start to a painting. And when I was doing this, I got to this point and I thought this could go absolutely anywhere. You know, you could do as much or as little as you liked. Um, it could turn into a beautiful autumn scene and all sorts of things. So very inspiring. I would suggest you give this a try. If you, if you can invest in a rigger brush or one of these sabers and just flick the paint around a bit, it's, uh, it's really, really fun. Now, as I said, this is going to be some poppies, so I am deciding at the moment whether to go with cadmium red or alizarin crimson for the poppies as the main red that we're going to use. And I'm just holding them up to the starting point of the painting to see which one goes best. And I've decided that the, um, the color I want is actually a mixture of the two. So this is a blend of alizarin crimson and cadmium red. And now I'm just with that old paintbrush that I used as my mixer at the beginning, I'm just splashing blobs of red paint in the sort of mid-ground of this painting. And they're going to be different sizes, some larger and some smaller, but it doesn't really matter. We just need to get some red in there so that we can start to see the poppy field growing. And then I'm going to enlarge those um, blobs uh, soon with a little bit more detail as we go on. And now I'm flicking some more red on with the with the sabre brush so we get the impression of poppies in the further distance. So we've got all sorts of different sizes of red blobs here. As I said this is a semi-abstract kind of painting. So now I'm using a, a small round brush, this I think is a seven, and I'm enlarging and amalgamating some of the dots to make larger poppy shapes and uh, just generally sketching them in, making them as random as I can, trying not to be too careful. Sometimes I think I would be better at doing this if I held the brush in my left hand, being as I'm right-handed. Uh, because really you, you, you don't want accuracy, you want something random, as loose as possible. 
So that would be one thing you could try. Um, I've noticed some people have changed the way they hold a paintbrush and they're gripping it between their thumb and their forefinger um, in a non-tripod way. And I think that's so that they get a less accurate line and way of getting around the uh, limitations that we put on ourselves because we use the tripod grip for writing. So tend to try to keep that under control. So if you change your grip, it could uh, loosen you up a lot. I haven't got round to doing that yet. Maybe I will. At the moment, I'm, I'm happy doing what I'm doing. So there we are. I've put larger poppies on the left near the top, medium sized ones on the right, and in the middle, they're getting smaller as they go into the distance. And that's the way I'm building up the composition, feeling my way into it as I go along. Obviously the ones in the distance are going to be a little bit lighter too, so there's more water and less paint on the brush there. Another couple going on there and near the top. That's Liam barking in the distance, I don't know if you heard that. Okay, I'm coming in now with a mixture of um, olive green and Windsor Violet, which makes quite a nice dark brown, actually. And I'm flicking in a few darks here into the foreground grasses. Um, more on the left than on the right. I'm keeping the right hand side at the bottom there relatively light. I might add a few more poppies there as we go on. So I'm sort of reserving that a little bit. And the next thing to do is to think about the sky. So I've got cerulean blue here, and I'm going to do a very rough wash into the sky. I then damp it down with a bottle, again, just uh, very lightly. And then I'm going to brush in using the brush on the side of it, and then just dragging the paint down. And it doesn't matter if it touches the poppies because that gives quite a nice effect as they bleed into the sky. Um, and uh, yeah, just very roughly. Um, this is like the opposite to a graded, graduated wash. This is more like painting a house, really. Nothing to be nervous about here, so just splashing it in. It gives a, a nice, loose, modern effect, I think. Now, everybody makes mistakes when they do paintings, and one of my weak spots is uh, far distance. And here I tried something out. Again, I tried something out. I was putting in a hill in the distance and I wasn't convinced about it. So you'll see the hill will disappear as the painting goes on. In fact, transform itself into something a little different. But don't be afraid to do this, you know. It's okay. Uh, now I'm drawing in the stalks of some of these poppies. One of my very first comments on one of my paintings was on a poppy painting. And uh, the very kind gentleman who commented said, I really enjoyed the video, but I was a little perturbed by the absence of a stalk on one of the poppies. And uh, so, you know, okay, point taken. When I looked again, I did think to myself, you know what, you're right. It was missing a stalk. So these ones being semi-abstract, that's a good excuse for not all having stalks, but there are stalks galore in this painting. And soon I'm going to have to let it dry because I'm going to want to put the details in and the dark centers of the poppies. So I've picked up some black, which is the only other color I'm going to be using in this painting. And I'm just very roughly dropping in black dots in the centers of the largest poppies. These aren't quite dry yet, so there will be a certain amount of running, but I don't think that really matters. I think that that's going to just give a more natural effect, so I'm not too worried about that. And now I'm dropping some in on the right hand side to the medium sized poppies. And I might just come in with my sword liner and do a few flicks just to give the idea of lots and lots of seeds and seed heads and general floaty bits. 
and of course as tends to happen I've splashed some black into the background but we can pick that up with a tissue in a minute and I'm just now blending the sky into the poppies a little bit more there. I decided to make them more, more cadmium red rather than the mixture I was using for the ones more in the distance because as we all know, as colours go into the distance they tend to get a little bluer. So the idea is that these ones are really much more in the foreground than the others. And I'll point out here also, this is interesting, that as the paint's drying um, the colour in the background is fading quite a lot and I know why that is, it's because I'm using a student's quality alizarin crimson um, which just doesn't have the same kind of um, strength of pigment that the proper artist's paints have. So I'm just touching that up with a little bit of quinacridone gold there to try to liven them up a bit because they are going a little bit on the dull side. It's, it's okay, it's not too disastrous, I'm not going to uh, beat myself up about that, but a little bit of quinacridone gold on top of there is, uh, is good. Now a few uh, nice dark stems there with the combination of um, Windsor Violet and Olive Green. Good combination that, you can't go wrong there. And I'm going to add a little bit more spatter now in the front left hand side there. This is uh, Windsor Violet and Olive Green, just to give a bit more contrast. Again, as the painting is drying, the colours are definitely fading back, which is quite surprising really. I did wonder whether also the paper might have something to do with it. Maybe it's very absorbent. I'm not sure, I haven't noticed that before with this paper. And so now I'm spattering on some quinacridone gold as well. And now I'm flicking in a few more grasses, trying to build up the contrasts in the front there. And now the painting's coming to an end. I'm just going to put in a couple more poppies in the front here with um, some cadmium red uh, to balance off the front of the, the whole composition. And then I think I'm going to call it a day. In danger of overpainting here, so we don't want to do that. So there, there we are, the last few poppies, and I think we can say we're done. Well, there we are, there's the final painting, and I hope you enjoyed watching me create this this afternoon on this beautiful sunny afternoon in March. Do give it a go yourself. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. There's nothing more likely to get the creative juices flowing than playing with a toothbrush and a bowl of paint. So happy painting and I'll say bye for now. Bye bye everyone, bye bye.